God's way is unconventional. Welcome to another episode of Morning Meds, FamilyFamily.com's devotional spot for males to meditate on Yahweh's word for good success. And good success is defined in Joshua 1 verse 8 where Moses mentors Joshua who is taking over the leadership of the Hebrew nation that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it for then you'll make your way prosperous then you will have good success. We are helping males and male supporters or manliness supporters to break down the word of God into bite-sized pieces so we can meditate on it. We are starting to go through this process to give you, I guess, training wheels or a platform for 99 days. And we are on day 62. And we're grateful for those who are continuing on this marathon march through the scriptures with us. We are males that want to lead our families in a biblical way. And we have been going through some elements or attributes of the biblical way. And we understand that the way is a, a, way, of sincer- it's a way of sincerity, but it's also a surprising way. It's an unconventional way today is what we're going to find out. We understand that the way is holy, the way is trustworthy, the way is perfect, the way is, um, is sincere. So... We have been going through from morning meds 57 all the way through elements of the or attributes of the way of God. Yesterday we were in Acts 9 looking at the story of Saul's conversion. Saul, the Pharisee who was anti Christ, anti the, the Nazarene sect as they were called before, they were called Christians, the sect that broke away from Judaism to follow. This Jewish carpenter called Jesus of Nazareth who said, who proclaimed he was the son of Yahweh and showed his, his proof through signs and wonders, the ultimate sign being his resurrection from the dead. And today, um, yesterday, sorry, we ended up seeing that God surprised Saul. Saul was going about his way to persecute the Jews, the Christians, sorry, because he is a traditional Orthodox Jew. And many people said he is a Pharisee trained under Gamaliel, Gamaliel, an ultimate Pharisee of that time. And Saul is trying to eradicate these embarrassment on Judaism from the face of the earth. He's locking them up. He participated in the assassination of Stephen, who was a deacon in the early church. And this is the person now that God stops in his way. And God converts him to become the, many people say, the the most influential apostle of the New Testament. He is writing about half of the books of the New Testament. Um, Well, and if you give him Hebrews, a little more than half. So this man is a surprise. He is surprised in his way. But he himself, as we turn the corner for today now, is an unconventional person. We would not believe that such a person could have been used in such an influential way. So let's go continue the story of Acts 9. We ended in Acts 9, verse Acts 9, 1 to 9 yesterday. We're going to take it about nine more verses to Acts 9, verse 10 to 19a. So we're reading from the English Standard Version, the story of the continu- continuing the story of the conversion of Saul. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. 
for I will show him how, he, how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized, and taking food, he was strengthened. That was up to verse 19a, the first part of verse 19 of Acts 9. And the key verse for today is verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel or instrument of, unto me or of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. And we are making, continuing on the point that God surprised Saul in his way to Damascus to continue persecuting or terrorizing the Jews. Saul was a terrorist, if you want to call it that, a religious terrorist. And we see this story in the Bible of people who use their faith to terrorize other people. This was not a trait, a Christian trait. This is not something that Jesus Jesus encouraged and celebrated. He, yes, there are times you will see in the Old Testament where Saul is given instructions to wipe out Amalekites, etc. And that those are very intense instructions. There is a method to what seems like the madness of God that you can explore further. However, here we see Jesus speaking to Saul and telling him that Saul is persecuting the church with his religious terrorism. God is against this form of religious terrorism that Saul is, is pursuing. Jesus did not encourage religious pers pers um, terrorism. When he was wiping people out of the temple, he was not killing them. He was cleaning the temple out on, I believe that was on the, the Palm Sunday, or the, was it the day before Palm Sunday? But somewhere around Palm Sunday, he went to the temple he beat people out of the temple who were terrorizing poor people, who were overcharging for temple sacrifices, who were selling and merchandising and making usury of people in the temple. They were terrorizing people in his temple. So there was a form of religious terrorism that Jesus was counteracting when he was beating people out of the temple, driving them out of the temple in the same way Adam and Eve were driven out of Eve in the same way the people of Israel were driven out of the, 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 the land of Canaan because they did not fulfill the promise of Christ. The principle is when we don't fulfill the promise of Christ, we are removed from the, prom the rewards of the promise. Whether it's the Garden of Eden, whether it is the land of Canaan, we are driven out of a, a, type of, a, a level of intimacy with God. The, the intimacy with God is reserved for those who are in relationship with him. And the, the, the teaching of Christianity in John 14, etc., is that no man comes to the Father but by Jesus. So Jesus is the way to the Father. So we are just making the point that Saul was a religious terrorist. Jesus is not a religious terrorist. And many people have made this, this saying that Jesus terrorized people. And there has been terrorism, religious terrorism in the Tanakh. And we want to counteract that. Judaism, etc. does not promote religious terrorism. Christianity does not promote religious terrorism and is a response to the terrorism of people who have been terrorizing the people of God with their own religious views. Saul being one of them. Saul was on his way to continue a form of religious terrorism that he is practicing to eradicate people off the face of the earth because of their, their faith in Jesus of Nazareth. Anyway, that's a more involved discussion. But the point we're making is that God is an unconventional God. He surprised Saul in his way to, to oppose the, the Christians. And Saul is not someone who you would see as credible. He is not someone who people will see, and you will see here, Ananias himself, when you read the scripture, he was saying, this man is not somebody that I want to have anything to do with. He is somebody that I am, he is afraid of him. This man is seen as anti-Christ, anti the Christian sect. 
And Ananias is saying, are you sure this is the person you want me to go to? And Jesus confirms that, yes, I am sure. This is the person. I am, I've chosen this person to defend my name. He says, I've chosen him to carry my name. And this is something in verse 15 that is very powerful. The name of God is authority. In Greek, it's his onoma, his name, his trademark, his signature. The identity, this, the unique identity of, of Jesus, of Yahweh, is carried by Saul. Is Saul, Saul is chosen, and here, chosen, you never see the word chosen, it speaks to anointed ecclesia, someone who is set apart. Often, we have people who we see as antichrist. We have heard many stories of people who were antichrist from other faiths, and God has, even after Saul, modern stories, people who were terrorizing Christians from other faiths, and they have come into Christianity and now been very powerful evangelists and apostles for the name of Christ and carrying Christ's name in a very powerful way. There is a gentleman, and he's a controversial gentleman, many people, some people call him a false prophet. His name is Todd White. He was raised in a Masonic home. A Masonic home is an Antichrist setting. He, he, he grew up in drug dealing, etc. And he is now a very powerful and, and popular evangelist. Um, yes, with controversy, with flair. But at the end of the day, I believe, and I believe that there are many, there are many others who believe he's carrying the name of Christ before the Gentiles. So Saul here, remember in Acts 1, God, Jesus says, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So Saul is you now chosen. The apostles like Philip and Peter, uh, John, etc., they're taking the news still heavily to the, gent to the Jews. Um, but Saul is now taking the news, and we see Peter breach, branching out into the Gentiles with Cornelius. Uh, but Paul is chosen to exclusively focus on the Jew, the Gentiles, bringing the name of Jesus to the Gentiles. And this is somebody, this is very important because he probably would not have a lot of credibility with Jews because Jews are afraid of him. He, the Christians, have seen him put people in jail. They have seen him put, uh, be a part of the putting, the stone into death of Stephen. So he has very little credibility. He has credibility as an antichrist, not credibility as a Christian in the, uh, in the name of the Jews. So I believe it is a strategic, it is a, a very strategic uh, play from the Lord to put him as one who is, who is influent, who is going to be used for the Gentiles. Anyway, for today, we want to encourage our families to know that we should not discriminate against people. If somebody is a drug dealer, someone is tattooed up, someone uh, has a certain track record, God can change that person. We know Paul, Saul, as he was called before, he even paid, God even changed his name to Paul. But God, it, he paid a part, played a part in his transformation. He was praying, he was fasting for a couple of days, I believe three days. He had visions. He followed through on the conversion. He played a part in his conversion. God started the process, but he played a role in his conversion through priestcraft and his prayerful disciplines. We hear another point of the, the, the sorcerer, um, Elimaeus, when he dealt with Philip, he did not pray. Philip told him, pray and try to change your heart. See if God will change your heart. He didn't pray. He asked, he asked Philip to pray for him, or Peter, sorry, to pray for, pray for him. Here, Saul, whose name is now Paul, is praying and Ananias joins him and mentors him through the process of change. So we want to train our families and we want to look, if we have a child that is disruptive, a, fam a wife that, is, that seems disruptive in the family at this time, the Holy Spirit can change that person and wants to change that person, can surprise you with the transformation in people in your own family that you think are out of the reach of God.